Hello and welcome to our recap of our lecture on cash flow statements. So first of all we looked at the format of our cash flow statement. Remember it's under IAS 7 and it's not specific. It doesn't give us a detailed format. What it does do is give us three headings to work with. First heading is cash flow from operating activities and we can do this either using the direct method or the indirect method. The direct method was to use the receipts from customers, payments to suppliers and payments to employers. Now that one's not as prevalent as the indirect method which is the one that we use in the exam. This starts with profit before tax and adjusts it for non-cash items to reconcile to cash from operating activities. So we start with profit before tax and we take out or add back in fact depreciation, impairments, amortization and we adjust for the change in working capital. Also remember accounting gains and losses. If they're losses we'll add them back. If they're gains we'll subtract them out. That will get us our cash flow from operating activities and we did that in illustration one. We then have our second heading of cash flows from investing activities for things like purchases and sales of non-current assets or indeed loans to other entities. Lastly, our third heading was cash flows from financing activities which was to do with the issue of shares, issue of debentures, any financing activities the business has undergone. Remember the key to cash flows is you do your question approach. So you set up your pro forma for the indirect method, you add back all your non-cash items from the profit and loss account and then you'll be able to set out your cash flows. That will reconcile you down to your cash flows from operating activities. You'll then start at the top of the balance sheet and you'll do a working for each item that you come to. Look at the information you're given in the question, identify any adjustments you need to put through and that will enable you to identify the cash flows. If you work your way down the balance sheet, you'll get everything there is to get and you should pass the question very easily. So when it comes to these workings, remember, you'll be given the opening balance in the question. So we know the opening balance. We also know the closing balance because it's given in the question. We know some of the movements then between the opening and the closing balances because they're given to us in the notes in the question. If we post all of that information and the opening balance plus the movements you're given doesn't equal the closing balance, well then the difference will be your cash flow, the bit that you're looking for to bring into your cash flow statement. You also need to look for any other cash flows, for example like the purchase of some fixed assets or the sale. So we did illustration two that showed exactly how to do your workings for a cash flow statement. Lastly we looked at the pros and cons of cash flow statements. On the plus side remember we said we can assess the quality of profit uh, if there's cash generated, the profit will be better. We can use it to value the business based on future cash flows. It gives more information to users and it's harder to manipulate than the income statement. However, on the downside, it is used, uh, prepared using historic information. So it's prepared on a historic basis. It must also be used with other statements. You must use your income statement and statement of financial position in conjunction with your cash flow statement to get an idea of how the business has done. And it is still possible to manipulate it. So do be aware of that. You could classify items that should be financing uh, cash flows as operating cash flows or something like that to manipulate those cash flows. So we went through a full past paper question in illustration three to see exactly how to approach these cash flow statements. So that was a recap of our lecture on cash flow statements.